So, um, who will play the next Black Panther? Oh, I think they're actually going to retire the role. But if they were going to keep it, um, I need to think about that. Who would you think? You There's should... a guy by the name of uh, uh, top of my head it was Mackey, um, Anthony Mackey. Anthony Mackey. You think he could yes. be Black Panther? Yes, he's I love up and Anthony coming. Mackie. Let me say that. No, he's not up and coming in my book. Like I love Anthony Mackey. I know mm-hmm. what he's been in. He's been in um, um, Hurt Locker. No, he uh, was talking about uh, She Hate Me, the okay. Spike Lee joint, and then my my favorite, The Adjustment Bureau. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you know, like I, I, he was also in. I think that was him in the Misadventures, or I forgot what, of Mister and Pete. I don't know if you've seen that film. It's really no. phenomenal. He's been a ton of movies. A ton yeah, of exactly. Movies. He's amazing. But I don't know if I want to see him as Black Panther. But I could see him. And who will? I mean, I, I tried to think about who would could could if they. And I think they will do a part two because they know it's going to make money. So, episode three. Yes. Are you ready? Uh huh. All right. So this week, third time's a charm. We're going to change up our check-in section, and we're introducing a segment called "What's Still Cooking," and we're going to review some stories that we've come across since the last time you heard us, and they're still cooking for us. So, DJ, what did you find? So one of the stories that I really am excited about is this new documentary about uh, Tina Turner, uh, the legendary Tina Turner, the queen of rock and roll. And it's set to premiere on HBO uh, March 27th. It's titled Tina. And it's going to be a documentary that really focuses in on her life after uh, Ike. And what's so amazing about the timing of this, she's actually a uh, nominee for the Rock and Roll, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I still can't so, believe that she's not in it already. Yeah, it is kind of shocking. But actually, she's already in it. She's um, She was inducted in 91 okay. along with uh, Ike Turner. Oh. But this time, it's just by herself. Awesome. So uh, that's pretty. I can't wait. So March 27th on HBO. And Lady Gaga's dog walker, <laughs> and this is a sad story, but with a happy ending somewhat, um, was robbed by a few men on uh, 9.40 p.m. Wednesday, February 24th. They uh, stole two of her French bulldogs, um, two of her three French bulldogs. During the process, they during the shuffle of, of, of with her uh, dog walker, they actually shot him in the chest wow. and he was in critical condition. Um, immediately rushed to the hospital. The, uh, the thieves uh, drove away in a Nissan Altima. And uh, Lady Gaga, when she found out about it, I'm quite sure she was heartbroken, but um, she did offer a reward for the finding of the dogs, uh, a $500,000 reward. Wow. Yeah. And the next day, um, a lady found those two dogs latched to a pole. <laughs> this all happened in, in in New York. I'm sorry, in Hollywood. So I just thought, it's kind of weird that this yeah. it's like this this really classy, I guess, area in Hollywood. This is this is going, this is going on. I mean, crime happens everywhere, I guess. Mm-hmm. And so, but her um, dog walker is now stable, okay. um, and that's great. I mean, being shot in in the chest. Wow, and uh, and she got her two dogs back, but the perpetrators are still on the loose. Well, I hope they get found. And um, and the police were saying they don't think Lady Gaga was necessarily targeted um, for this abduction, but lately there's been a lot of um, robberies for these kinds of dogs. These French bulldogs are very high on the market. And there's been a lot of frequent targets for theft for them because it's a very it's the fourth most popular breed in the country. So mm-hmm. a lot of dog nappers are picking these dogs. Wow. Um, well, I found two things that are still cooking for me. I'll get through them quickly so that we can get on to the show. But speaking of dogs, um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez had some words to say about NYPD's new robotic dog. She tweeted about the 70-pound canine which is equipped with lights, two-way communication, and video cameras, along with the ability to climb stairs and run about three and a half miles an hour. It was tested in her home um, of the Bronx two weeks ago. 
And she tweeted, shout out to everyone who fought against community advocates who demanded these resources go to investments like school counseling instead. Now robotic surveillance ground drones are being deployed for testing on low income communities of color with under resourced schools. Please ask yourself, when was the last time you saw next generation world class technology for education, healthcare, housing, et cetera, consistently prioritized for underserved communities like this. Mm. I know it's shameful. Um, on another note, I am looking forward to the weekend. Um, this weekend, um, well, actually, when people hear this, it would have already come out. But the sequel for Coming to America is debuting on Amazon Prime. Yeah. Um, so it came out <laughs> on Friday, March 5th. It follows up the famed 1988 comedy and stars members from the original cast, including Eddie Murphy, of course, uh, Arsenio Hall, James Earl Jones, who I'm really looking forward to seeing again on mm -hmm. screen, Sherry Headley, Paul Bates, and John Amos. And Eddie Murphy's 19-year-old daughter, Bella, is going to make her debut. Wow. I can't wait for that. I What's actually... Your favorite quote from the original? My, I have two favorite quotes. The first one is... Sexual chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> and there's another scene where the her the I guess the boyfriend, you know, the the guy who's actually with the, the soul glow hairstyle. Mm -hmm. He's actually Eric LaSalle. Yeah, okay, that's his it's, name. That's the actor. So he's talking to Eddie um Murphy's character and um I guess there's a, 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 some kind of party they're having, and he looks at Eddie Murphy and he says, "Women just want to be told what to do." <laughs> That's one of your favorite quotes. That's very telling, DJ. Yeah, because how he says it, my sister always throws this at me all the time when he when he when there's a, a aggressive uh, man like some some guy she's dating or whatever, and he's like, you know, women just want to be told what to do. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, let's get ready to get into the show. You ready to get into our first topic? Yes, the first topic. All right. So this is something <laughs> that you found and yeah. I want to talk about it, but mm -hmm. it's almost like, why do we have to? But let's mm -hmm. go ahead and do it. So yeah. if you are one of the lucky people who were fortunate enough to not know the name Rachel Dolezal, uh, congratulations. But <laughs> Rachel Dolezal is a woman who was the former president of the NAACP chapter in Spokane, Washington. She was a college instructor and an activist. She went to Howard University for her master's in fine arts and for most of her life to the world, she was a black woman until June, 2015, when it was revealed that she was born to white parents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Recently, she is entered the news again as she has had a hard time now that she has been exposed and she's getting a taste of the full black experience. <laughs> she was a guest on the Tamron Hall show and shared that she had been unemployed for the past six years. She's gone as far as to change her name to Nkechi Amari Diallo. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> no comment. Um, and she braids hair and paints to make a living. Um, she, used to she used to describe herself as transracial. So yeah, yeah. What do you think, DJ? I saw her documentary on your Netflix called "The Rachel Divide," mm -hmm. and I, I felt sorry for her sons because they are, you know, black men. You know, uh, especially when you get pulled over by the police. And uh, I do feel that she is emotionally un unbalanced. There's something off about this woman mm. for her to. I mean, during the documentary, they were even saying to her, you know, you know, do the good work, but you're not black. Why do you need to 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 go as far as to say that you're you're black? You're not. And that's the problem that those women in that documentary had with her. But she like she couldn't face that. She like, I can I, I get to choose my my race. So it's like you don't you don't get to choose that. Yeah, I saw the documentary, too. And. I have no recollection anymore of what was in it. <laughs> you just forgot. I don't have the mental space to hold that. Um, what's interesting is that, you know, when we said that we were going to talk about her on today, this, 
this episode, I remembered that there are other people like Rachel Dolezal. Oh, really? So, yeah. So there is, in a, in a way, in a way. So there was recently Jessica Krug, who was exposed. Well, actually, she exposed herself. She was a professor at George Washington University, and she had pretended to be Black, even though she was a white Jewish kid from suburban Kansas City. Wow. So that came out um, last September, September 2020. But when I was thinking about what I had to say about Rachel Dolezal, I remembered this very, very uh, curious person. Um, her name is Martina Big, and I don't know if you've ever heard of her, no. but I remember um, when I spent more time on Facebook, I came across her story. And she's a German model and actress known for extensive body modification. Okay. okay. So German. So she's white. She has blonde hair. At least that's how she was born, right? Okay. So the way the reason why she came to fame is for her extremely large breast implants. She mm. has the biggest in the world. And um, in addition to her breast augmentation, she has undergone medical treatments to turn her skin black and alter her hair. So the wow. latest development on her. So this was years ago that I heard about her. Right. She spent all of this money. Her and her, her husband supports her and all of this. Um, the latest development is that in 2019, she moved to Kenya with her husband and has taken on the lifestyle and the faith. And she says, I not only look like an African woman, I also feel that I am now an African woman. Oh. So we'll link in the okay. show notes to that story because there's a video so you can see her and hear her. Okay. Um, but like, it, it's almost ridiculous to me uh, because she, she, she says that her and her husband, who's also now gotten the melanin injections. to, to So her husband is also white? Yes. He's German as well. Oh, okay. Um, yes. So two white people who are now living in Kenya are hoping to have a black child together. Okay. Now, how are two white people going to produce a black child? <laughs> That's beyond me. As, as, as much as Rachel Dolezal is beyond me. Um, <sighs> Well, I would love to have her on the show, on, no, on our podcast. No, no. I would, <laughs> I would veto love to. that all the way. I would veto it all the way. Um, and I'll tell, I'll tell you why. why. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Why would you What's want Rachel Dolezal from? on the show? No, that's a no. That's like a, a solid no. Um, but what you're hearing from me, the frustration and the anger that you're, you're hearing from me okay. is because of her blatant um, misuse of her privilege, her denial of her privilege. Um, I don't feel sorry for her. I have compassion, like you said, for her sons. And uh -huh. I do agree that there's something off about her because she has the ability to make their lives different and better. And she refuses to, you know, cause like, I remember when she first was exposed, it was almost mm. like, well, wait a minute. Okay, so she was actually, you know, on our side. She worked for the NAACP. Right. She would be doing all of these talks about black hair, you know, like, she was she was doing the things that black activists do. Yeah, that makes sense. That part makes no, sense. No, it doesn't make sense because you can Why? do that as a white person. No, and not that, actually, no, not what I'm talking about make, is what I'm saying is what makes sense is doing that work makes sense. But when you go as far as to say that you're now African American, that's when you cross the bounds. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. But what okay, so my disgust is that. Her abuse of her privilege didn't actually help the Black community or humanity in total. Because I believe that if she had acted from the space as a white woman, mm -hmm. she could have made more change to white supremacy. I feel like she inverted her white supremacy to, to change her racial identity for whatever reason. For whatever reason. You know, there, there's stories, and, and I think maybe in the documentary they talked about that she had a troubled childhood. I understand that. Um, I have compassion for that. But mm -hmm. changing your racial identity to co-opt spaces that do not belong to you, even if you're doing the work, that is not being an ally. That is not furthering the movement. That's not that's not what that is. And so I, I, I really I don't I don't have clearly I don't have understanding for it. And to me, it, it feels insulting and it feels demeaning, I think, to all of mm -hmm. the black activists. Because the NAACP was started with white people and black people. True. It's not like she didn't have a space there. Right. But you don't have to pretend and lie to people about who you are. That's exactly true. I, I agree with that definitely. That 
that what she does, like her total thing, a vibe, is demeaning. I, I agree with that. I do feel sorry for her. I really do. The reason why I feel sorry for her is because she really wants to be helpful, but there's a tick in her that has taken to a, tick, tick to a, like, taking it to a whole nother extreme. And with that extreme, like you said, is not helpful at all, you know, and uh, I think she needs to get it to a therapist. Even in her documentary, a black woman there said to her, get, honey, honey, see a therapist. And I don't know if she has or not, but I think that she's a little ticky, ticky, boom. <laughs> and one thing that one black woman said in that documentary, she said that how can you help black people accept themselves if you haven't accepted your own race? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So, I think it's a way to escape uh, what it means to be white. And I mean, I could actually make the argument for what's going on with her. You know, I, I, I don't recommend that people do this, even though I'm about to do it, because I have no idea how she got to be where her safety and her identity is um, in claiming a black racial identity. But mm -hmm. I think a lot of white people actually do this in a way to avoid the pain of accepting what it means to be white in terms of the legacy of being white um, and, and owning the, the atrocities that have been done by white people, um, that if she was treated poorly by her parents. Probably so. White, I, I, see, white, I, can, I can feel that, that. She doesn't also want to be white, but that, that doesn't... Yeah, she got mommy daddy issues. That's just not the way issues. it works. That's just not can, the way it works. I can tell she has mommy daddy issues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can you can clearly see that. Yeah. And her mother and father who is actually who dined her out. Mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. You know? Exactly. They have a troubled relationship. That's clear. Um, but I I also think it speaks to um the continued conversation of how the world enjoys the rhythm but doesn't want the blues. But Rachel's experiencing the blues because she is still claiming to be a black woman. Um, but um, I think, you know, I mean, because like, I just- It makes you I angry. So, yes, I get so angry because even in her being a black woman, mm -hmm. she still benefits from the privilege of having fair skin, you know, the colorism mm -hmm. that still exists. She doesn't acknowledge that. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so it's just, yeah, I think, I think one of your issues would be, a, I could be wrong that and I think listen to a lot of women, the reason why they get frustrated with people like Rachel Dolezal is because they put black on like it's a fad. And then when it's no longer in fashion or trending any longer, they can just take it off and go back to their their white life. Mm -hmm. So that's the issue that that people have with that, with that black scent, people taking on Afrocentric identities and then taking it off when it's no longer cool any longer. Right. No longer right. What I want to say is um, I agree with that. Like every everybody wants to be black until it's time to be black. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is problematic. I but know what Dave I, Chappelle said, not what Dave Chappelle, Paul Mooney actually said it, you know, but I'm not going to repeat it, what he said. <laughs> um, what I will say is that I think what we can learn from Rachel Dolezal, what's, um, what Rachel Dolezal has to teach white people is the appropriate and inappropriate ways of being an ally. <laughs> and so... Harvard Business Review has an article that I will um, put in the show notes called Be a Better Ally. And they have like several ways to do that. Um, and I'm just going to highlight three. One is own your privilege. That's something she didn't do. Um, to bring diversity to the table. So instead of bringing other Black women into the fold or bringing Black people into places that she probably could access as a white woman, she just took the space by becoming a Black person. Um, so don't do that. And then sponsor marginalized coworkers. If you are in spaces and your coworkers aren't and they're marginalized, bring them or mentor them or create, speak their name in rooms that they'll never get into without your support. So I think that allyship is one thing. Co-opting is another. And 
we need to move towards having better allies. So you feel she's she's been a co-opt? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I God bless her. God bless her sons because yeah, they're the ones who's doing this. carrying the the real weight of all of her decisions, mm-hmm. bad decisions. Yeah. So, what's your breakdown? My breakdown is uh, I feel very sorry for Rachel Dolezal. Um, and again, like I said, for her son, that's very sad. And I think she suffered from mental illness. Um, and I think that she has not definitely recovered from whatever bad experiences she had as a white child with her parents, obviously. And I think that, uh, that her inability to accept that she's white just totally defuncts her ability to help black people. Yeah, I would agree with that. I I would say that Rachel Dolezal is an example of how not to be an ally. Um, But she also proves why there is a need for whiteness studies, why there is a need to talk about what whiteness is, um, and the beauty of being Black, that everybody wants it, but you don't want to appreciate Black people. So I think it's a call to the world that you not only of the the not only the beauty of black culture gets to be re- revered but black people also get to be revered um and protected um so we need people in places of power and privilege to be allies um and i will say um black because even in the people people of color movement and 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 all of that anti blackness is real so okay. that that's my breakdown okay I like it. All right. You ready for the make you laugh segment? Yes. Make me laugh. Okay. So I found a couple of really odd stories. Um, And one, I actually saw something related on Instagram right before we started recording. But the Swansea Police Department in Illinois posted on their Facebook page a photo with the caption of missing chicken. Although it was actually... (laughs) according to the comments, a missing guinea fowl. They described it as loud, belligerent, non-cooperative, foul smelling, won't leave. They are looking for anyone missing a guinea fowl to get in touch with them. (laughs) And so right before we got started, I saw one of my Instagram friends posted about the local news in her neighborhood and someone had spotted in what they thought was uh, a loose ostrich that was wow. exactly but actually it's not an ostrich it's an emu and the mm. difference exactly the difference is is about the number of toes on the ostrich and the emu and then one runs 10 miles per hour faster than the other and the police department in that um situation said that you know, the only people who know the difference of that is animal control, and we're not. So if you're missing an emu, <laughs> to please contact us. <laughs> so all of these interesting pets and animals are happening. I want to see an emu and an ostrich race each other. <laughs> <laughs> so now that, that makes me wonder if Coyote, uh, um, um, Coyote was always Roadrunner. Mm-hmm. Was um, it actually ostrich? Right, or was it... Been it- or an emu. an emu, right? <laughs> it was interesting though when I saw the story about the guinea fowl on the Nextdoor app. I don't know if you, you use the Nextdoor app, but no. in, um, so there's an app that's it's a it's a social media platform, but it's for your neighborhood, so you can know what's going on in your community and things like that. But recently, someone posted on Nextdoor in my neighborhood in Washington D.C. that they were missing their hen. Like, they're, they're okay. <laughs> but what was what was even more crazy was that one of the comments said, I hope your chick comes back home. Too many predators out. One morning I went to walk my dogs. I will never forget it. It was a chicken laying in the middle of the street with no head. <laughs> and wow. I'm just, I'm just thinking of all the things, all the things. But I had a funny joke that I read that is, you know, the look was why the chicken crossed the road, you know, <laughs> why? <laughs> Why did the chicken cross the, cross the road? With the first story you just said, it was just too funny, you know. Why? Why? Why did the guinea fowl fowl? Yeah, 
you know, actually, now, Rick, I saw your story. I scrolled down. I saw someone who asked that question. You know, it was just too funny. Why did the chicken cross the cross road? The, the, yeah. All right. Another odd story. Um, it's no longer um, happening. It happened uh, earlier in February. But Paul Luger's Steakhouse have the wax figures mingle with patrons to promote the easing of coronavirus con- restrictions. So you could have a cocktail with Draper from Mad Men. Um, and also Michael Strahan, Jimmy Fallon, Al Roker, and Audrey Hepburn were present in the restaurant. Can you imagine going That's, to dinner? It was kind of creepy to me. I know, right? Can you imagine going to dinner and at the table next to you, there's like a figure that never moves? Right. They're like Al Roker. Right? I, saw, I saw the picture. I said that because I thought it was Al Roker when I first saw the picture. I went... <laughs> That's like oh. a horror movie thing. That's not appetizing to me. It doesn't feel inviting. I didn't see anyone in the restaurant when I saw the saw the 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 article. I'm like, this is not working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was interesting. So, those are just some odd stories that I found. I was like, what? What? Where are we in the world now? Topic right. two. Yeah, you ready to get to the next topic? Yeah, this is this is exciting to me. You know, I mean, Chad Bozeman passed away um, last year, and um, you know, people were heartbroken by that because he was beloved. And Absolutely. but uh, he was nominated for a Golden Globe um, for um, best supporting, well, best actor in a motion picture or drama, and he won. He won um, the, actually the Golden Globe, the seventy eighth Golden Globe Awards was held Sunday the twenty eighth the 28th and in Beverly Hills and he he won and I'm just so happy for his family because that definitely I'm quite sure gives them some kind of um I won't say peace of mind or anything like that but it, it helps you know so I'm glad that they they gave him that and he did an absolute an absolutely awesome performance in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom absolutely and uh I mean riveting you know, yeah. so if if we had a chance to see more work from him, we would have saw some. Uh, I'm quite sure, you know, Oscars and and things like that from him. And he still might get that Oscar, you know, when those nominees are are um, eventually uh, given out. So, uh, what do you think about um, him winning? I think that's awesome. Um, I heard someone describing today the actual award ceremony. I didn't see it, but they were saying that um, they did like a segment right before they announced um, him winning where they had like kids of all races and ages. And they were asking them like facts about the world and the country or the news, like where's the White House and, um, Mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And none of the kids knew anything. But when you ask them, Who's Chadwick Boseman? They all said Black Panther. Black wow. Panther. Like they all knew that. I know, right? And when the way you're saying why not, like it, I just like, oh my gosh, I wish I'm going to have to like try to find that to see if it's available to see because I got chills when I heard that. And I was just like, wow. Um, I'm really glad that he won, especially mm-hmm. for Ma Rainey Black, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. I, I watched it three times. Like the first time I watched it, the movie mm-hmm. ended and I turned it back on again. I'd never done wow. that before. But it was, I was just so moved by his performance, especially. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought he was really phenomenal, but I'll also never forget going to see Black Panther and just all the hype around that. Mm-hmm. Um, like I got dressed up in my African garb. Um, oh, really? Yeah, wow. of course. Did you? No, I did not. I, I, I saw it in the theater, but mm-hmm. you know, I, I didn't. I didn't know what to expect because I would just felt like, okay, we're going to go to watch another another movie, and um, and then when I went, I went, oh, this is like a, this is a movement, you know? Yeah, it was a real movement. I remember that, like people were going, and you know, Wakanda forever, and um, mm-hmm. that was a big thing. It was a it was a great film. Um, you know, I have my critiques of it, but you know, um, Chadwick was great. Um, I also, you know, I looked at some of his big films that he's been in you know he was in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom he was also in Spike Lee's The Five Bloods did you get a chance to see that no I haven't okay that was actually pretty good I would check that out he was Thurgood Marshall in Marshall and I remember seeing that in the theaters as well that was good he was James Brown in Get On Up he was Jackie Robinson in 42 
And he also did some TV stuff, um, Nathaniel Ray on Lincoln Heights. So he did a lot of stuff. But what's interesting is that he went to Howard University, HU. I'm just pausing wow. for all of the, uh, the bison to go ahead and do their thing. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't go to school for acting. He was in school for directing. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I remember, I think I heard something about... Um, he got into acting, but he was going for directing, but it wasn't like acting was he really, you know, what he was focused on doing. Uh-huh. So it's amazing that, you know, he was it able to do out. so much and do so well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I Meryl Streep's kind of like that. She didn't go to school for acting either. She went to school for costume. Meryl you know? Streep? Yeah. She went to school really? for costume, not for acting. Costume. Wow. Because oh, that is an actor. Okay. Yeah. So so it doesn't have to work out the way that you, you know, and to become great. And, Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. You know. So, um, who will play the next Black Panther? Oh, I think they're actually going to retire the role. But if they were going to keep it, um, I need to think about that. Who would you think? You There's should. a guy by the name of uh, uh, top of my head. It was Mackie, um, Anthony Mackie. Anthony Mackie. You think he could yes. be Black Panther? Yes, he's I love up Anthony and coming. Mackie. Let me say that. No, he's not up and coming in my book. Like I love Anthony Mackie. I know mm-hmm. what he's been in. He's been in, um, um, Hurt Locker. No, he was uh, talking about uh, She Hate Me, the okay. Spike Lee joint, and then my my favorite, The Adjustment Bureau. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you know, like I, I, he was also in. I think that was him in. The Misadventures, or I forgot, what, of Mr. and Pete. I don't know if you've seen that film. It's really no. phenomenal. He's been in a ton movie. of movies. A ton yeah, of exactly. Movies. He's amazing. But I don't know if I want to see him as Black Panther. But I could see him. And who will? I mean, I, I tried to think about who would, could, could if they, and they, I think they will do a part two because they know it's going to make money. But I thought who they said they... that they were going to retire it. We'll see. You know, you know how they do. They like they tell you no, no, they tell you no <laughs> sequel. It won't. And then all of a sudden, boom! There's a there's a sequel. So, um, so I'm hoping that they will do it because, uh, it it would just be good. I think it'd be really good for everyone if we could, you know. But they have to cast it correctly because if you do not do it correctly, it, it you know, the guy who the poor guy who who takes that role and doesn't do well you know yeah so, yeah um. yeah i don't know if i can even think of anyone who i think could do it and like create the continuity between chadwick's performance mm-hmm. um, yeah i'd have to think about that i probably have to tell us in episode four i'm gonna be thinking about it all week <laughs> you didn't even think idris we, you know, doesn't come mm-hmm. to mind maybe i think idris is too old i think yeah I mean, not, yeah, no, no, no harm, you know. I don't know how old he just is. It just, but is what? I think, I mean, I think the Black Panther needs to be someone who's still like up and coming and and young. Um, mm-hmm. I was at first, I was thinking, um, what is his name? John, is it John David Washington, Denzel's son? But oh, I actually, okay. I actually think that he's. I don't think that he's he would be the right fit either. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I have to think about that. I'm gonna be thinking about that all week. I'll let you know next week. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I think Anthony Matthew would be would be a good a good fit from my perspective. I think he would be because I just think that from what I've seen him do, I think he'd get in shape. That's for sure. You know, because he's. I haven't seen know. him recently. Yeah, he he's uh, he's he's shapely for for a guy. I put it that way. <laughs> shapely for a guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he has those. He, he has. He, he, he. It will. Anyway, he, get, go online. Put in Anthony Mackie. You. you I don't know what he about. looks like, but I haven't seen him recently. Um, yeah. I was thinking of. I don't know if I feel like if there were another superhero character, mm-hmm. I would love to see the guy that was the lead in um, Lovecraft Country. I can't remember his name right now. It's blanking on me. I remember mm-hmm. every single picture, but I cannot remember his name, name. right now. Lovecraft. Yeah, let me actually. Okay. Um, but I think that he would be a great superhero. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, because he almost played one in Lovecraft Country. But um, I don't know if I could see him as um, as the Black Panther. As a Black Panther, right? Jonathan Majors is his name. Okay, Jonathan yeah. Majors. Okay, I heard that name before. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah think I think that I, he would I, be an awesome superhero, but maybe not Black Panther. But I mm-hmm. would love to see him in a Marvel movie. Um, yeah. Hmm. 
Okay. Well, you know what? I I make these videos all the time about the top black actors, and everybody that I would choose, they would turn out to be you know big time. So, like who else? Who else have you chosen? Uh, Chadwick Boseman. Mm -hmm. I've chosen. Um, Anthony Mackie. I've chosen. Would you um, say Anthony is big time? Uh, like has he he done TV? he, he I, he's. He's not as big as he's going to be. Okay, I like that. Um, but he he definitely has the resume. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. But he's going to be he, now that I mean, sad to say, Chad with Bozeman is, is is you know not with us, but he's going to replace everything that that Chad would 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 have got. He's going to take that role. Wow. He's going, yeah, that's what that's what I can see. And actually, I, I saw an article a few days ago that said Anthony Mackie is now the man. Wow. Okay. You know. Okay. So, so, and I could see that as soon as I, when I heard Chapman, Chatwood had, had passed away, I said, oh, Anthony Mackie is up next. What about this? So there's a lot of the, the, the British black actors are doing a lot of American roles now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, Daniel Kaluuya was in um, Judas and the Black Messiah mm -hmm. um, and he was amazing in that. Yeah. Um, but could you see him as a Black Panther? Um, I could see him as well. Um, uh, the problem with him would be um, he people may not he might not have that uh, that universal appeal that they're looking for. So why not? I think because uh, he the roles that I've seen him play, mm -hmm. he hasn't displayed any sex appeal, and really? I think that's a you didn't no. think he, oh you you haven't seen Judas and the Black Messiah yet then have you? No, I have not seen it. Okay, yeah. I so so th so there's watch some that and then see and see if you think feel the same way. Uh, okay, I, I'm only reason I haven't seen it because I'm like on the fence about buying HBO Max. Uh, you don't have if, HBO Max, so that means no. that you didn't see I made I made destroy you. No, I haven't seen it because I'm on the fence about buying it. I'm just oh like. My God. If anything, if anything, I May Destroy You is worth buying it. Like, okay. if that was the best TV I've ever seen. Because I'm troubling, like. It was clever. It, it, was, it was the best I've ever seen. Michaela okay, Cole cause... is a rock star because she produced it. She wrote it. She starred in it. It was amazing. I've never seen anything that, like, troubled me and was as thought-provoking and well done as oh, that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, well, I have three things that I want to see then because with that, because I wasn't going to buy it for one for one movie, but I know that with Tina coming out mm -hmm. with Black Judas and that third one that you just mentioned, that's I enough for you. But then you also have to watch Lovecraft Country. Like if you're going to get it, you just got to watch all the good stuff. Okay, well, it seems like all the good stuff is there. So I'll, exactly, I'll, 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 I'll and do then it. the French. The Fresh Prince of Bel Air reunion. That's on there too. Really? Okay. Yeah, I, that was great too. Okay. So I'll 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 pay the fifteen dollars a month. Yeah. It's worth it. <laughs> and it's okay, worth it's it. worth it. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's worth it. Great. Um let's go back to Chadwick Boseman a little bit. But okay. thinking about all of the people and actors that he's worked with, because mm -hmm. he's also like because the better actor you are, the better movies you get to play in. So the better right. co-stars that you have. What's your favorite co-star that um, Chadwick worked with? Uh, of course, Viola Davis. I knew you were going to say that. And that's yeah. who I was going to say. I'm in love with Viola Davis. I mean, What's your I, favorite it, role that she's been in? Uh, the My favorite role that she's played uh, is so many of them. Um, it's just so difficult because everyone she she does she's uh but there's a scene in doubt she's only in doubt yes, for like i love that exactly i just saw that last year for the first time but i watched or it eight, eight minutes over i've probably seen it 30 times just for that scene you know it's what i heard so mm -hmm. i heard that in that role is after when her career took off not just because mm -hmm. of her performance because mm -hmm. Meryl Streep is a real ally and right. spoke her name in rooms after working with her on that project. Yeah, yeah, she did. Actually, during a award ceremony, she 
uh, the Writers Guild, I believe, she actually, doing her winning an award, she actually said, somebody please give her a role. <laughs> give wow. her a movie. Wow, that's awesome. You know? But yeah, she was great in that. I will have to say that um, I can't say of all of the things because I didn't really look at the list of all the things. But I'll say that mm. my I enjoy her most and like I love her the most in How to Get Away with Murder. Yeah, she's like she's I awesome. really just love how authentic she is. And especially I still remember because this was the time before I got really heavy into streaming and would just watch things whenever. But I remember the Thursday night on primetime TV mm -hmm. when she took her wig off. And yeah. took her makeup off on primetime TV. And I yeah. was like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. Like she's, that she, was she's amazing. The, that the was amazing. real deal. Yeah, she, she is. Really is. She is. You know, and to know that was her idea. And then she had to negotiate that. She said that it took them hours of negotiation I'm before sure. they approved that by mm -hmm. ABC. I'm sure. So um I'm just I I can sit and listen for hours. I have. I want I, I every interview I could find about her, I think I've seen every interview on it on YouTube, I've been able to find. I've seen it. Wow. So. Wow. She is phenomenal. And I really hope her career continues to explode. Um mm -hmm. and that she she does a lot more. I wonder if she's interested in directing at all. Um, because I would be interested mm -hmm. to get her perspective of from a director's point of view. Yeah, she's another one that I would love to have on the show, and I believe of that, uh, if, that she she would actually do it, you know. Um, but she <laughs> has a movie. Her? I I definitely plan to. My, if you look at my list of, of people that I want to invite on the show, she's on my list. Okay. Of people that I would love to have, and she's actually I've seen her do interviews with podcasters. Okay. She, she's done it, you know. So she's well, I down will hold to that her. with you. We will have Viola Davis. On breaking it down on, with DJ and Courtney. Oh my God, I would I would probably spend the first thirty minutes crying. <laughs> okay, so we're definitely gonna have to practice. <laughs> before you know, because she's the. I mean, she is so awesome. I, and I seen her and like before she blew up. I watch her interviews then, and still humble. Yeah. Even, you know, yeah. so it's amazing. amazing I follow moment. her on Instagram, and I just really enjoy the content that she creates. I just appreciate so much. Her energy. She's on. She was on um one of my vision boards before I cut off all my hair. Like her haircut was my inspiration. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. Um, but I remember she's been on like um the own show Black Love, and they talk mm -hmm. about how her, and her husband met. Yeah. You know. I just mm -hmm. I really admire her and appreciate her. And then you know she's a talented actor. So. Yeah, she'd be acting like Cicely Tyson up to the end. I mean, she's she's. I hope so. She she's that phenomenal. You know, she just mm -hmm. knows the role and how to infuse that humanity in every role she takes on. And if she can't, she won't do it. Right. She doesn't have to do it now. This is really frivolous, but have you seen the picture that she posted after she did Ma Rainey? Because she put on weight to take on that role. Mm -hmm. And she posted a picture of her working out with her trainer. And I don't know if you remember when Michelle Obama was in the White House with Brock and her arms, Michelle's arms were like the goal. If you mm. haven't seen Viola Davis holding these, like 15 pound dumbbells, looking all glammed up with her trainer, like her bo body goals, like for real. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I definitely have to, to uh, look at <laughs> I'll, up I'll find it and send it to you. But yeah, it's, it's, I'm like, wow. Yeah. Well, I can't wait. She has a new movie coming out later this year about these African uh, warriors that she's going to be in, that she's oh, actually cool. producing with her husband. Oh, awesome. So, I can't wait to see yeah. that. And you know, yeah. this might just be still in the rumor mill, but um, I looked up recently because, you know, I don't know if you ever look up on IMDb. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it'll show like projects that are just announced that aren't mm -hmm. like, so it may happen. It may not happen. But I saw something called, I don't know if it was called the White House or if it was called the First Lady. I think it's called First Lady. And it said that Viola Davis was going to be in it playing Michelle Obama. Wow! Isn't that crazy? Wait, the arms. Yeah, she got in my book. She's got the part. Well, well, that, well she's probably looking out the, for for that role. She might be looking out for <laughs> that role so. right now. Maybe so. so, but I'm really hoping that it happens. And when I was looking at like the other cast people, it looks like it's going to be a look at all the first wives, so other first women. Um, mm -hmm. and so I didn't I didn't have the time to like Google to see who's behind it and if mm -hmm. it really is going to happen, but. Mm -hmm. 
go check on IMDb. And- okay, I'm glad you mentioned First Women because I saw a little article mm-hmm. about Jackie Onassis and she had some things, disparaging things to, to say about Martin Luther King. But that's another. Oh, another, really? Another mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, look it up. It's, it's she had she she you know she, these recordings they had of her that were never released, and her daughter finally released them, and, oh, wow. um, and she. Gives her real opinion of how she feels about things. <laughs> well, can't say I'm surprised. Yeah, well. All right, so, any last words on Chadwick Boseman? Um, God bless his family. Yeah. God bless his family because it's hurt it's hurtful to lose a loved one, but it's mm-hmm. comforting when you have the world saying your 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 brother or your son or, or is was was awesome, was great. So they, at least they have have that to to give to honor him. So yeah, um, I just wanted to share something I saw on Instagram about him. Like after his passing, people were posting tributes and things like that. Mm-hmm. And there was someone who was saying, "I want to say I can't remember if they were fighting cancer or if they were a cancer survivor or something like that, um, or whatever, or they were dealing with something, and they were returning to running, and they were running in their neighborhood." Um, and they felt like giving up, like in this very moment. And they looked up and there was a, a black limousine and some guy in a tuxedo got out and he's like, you can do it. You can do it. And so the guy like continued to run. And as he got closer, he realized that it was Chad. Oh, Bozeman. wow. And he was so moved by that because it he inspired him in that moment. And the Chadwick didn't know who he was. And he was there to re- he was in a tuxedo because it was some award show happening that night. And that's when the guy was watching the, the award show later and recognized that it was Chadwick Boseman and just, you know, felt even more inspired that someone who was winning an award is cheering yeah. him on and a hard part in his life. So I just, I, I think that that should inspire all of us. Yeah, that speaks to the kind of human being he was. Exactly. We should all find moments to inspire every, every, everyone, wherever we go. So that's, I think wow. that can be a, a wonderful legacy for him. Yeah. I think you took my inspiration moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go ahead and move into that segment. What do you got for, um, well, inspired? this sort of piggybacks off of the conversation we had last week. And one thing that I think our podcast does is it shows us that we don't, I have a, we're not pundits. And we don't have a, a perspective that is stagnant. You know, we, we're we here to learn from each other and see a broader perspective. So last week you were talking about um, policing holistically. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, I don't believe in defunding the police, but I believe that we do need to um, take a look at how we do police and use um, you know, funding and resources in an appropriate way and training and, and this new thing that Denver has done. What Denver has done is they've taken steps in the right direction. They have started hopefully what will be a new trend in terms of policing. Hmm. Instead of responding with police, Denver is sending health care teams to non-criminal calls. And so far, it is already saving lives. Oh, There's a, a so Denver has started something called the the support team assistance response um, the star program. They launched this program back in June of 2020 to help ensure the vulnerable get the help they need. And so far, they have had when I read this article, they had um, almost 750 calls that star had addressed and to low level calls um and none have ended in arrest or jail time and they push 1.4 million dollars to expand this service because it's so successful there we and go there we go Absolutely. there you go this is great and uh the people who are, the, the you know the, the great people who are working on this program they are working eight hour shifts but it covers all hours of the week exactly this is affordable it's doable it's doable it's doable way to go denver yeah way to go denver and due to black lives matter protests it seems likely that increasing numbers of police departments around the world will follow in denver's footsteps turning inward inward turning inward to see what can be done to improve the relationship between the officers and their communities to make everyone feel safe. I love that. You know, yeah, it made That's me feel like if 
that would have been the case for Daniel Prude, who was having a, a mental illness crisis. He would he could possibly be still here today Absolutely. if those individuals had been called. Several, several people would probably still be here today. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. That's great. That's a great story. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so you, so, so you, so you did, you did get me to see something, uh, to broaden my perspective. So I'm, 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 I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> so don't feel like, you know, I'm not hearing you. Awesome. awesome. Okay. Do you have any announcements? Well, I don't have any announcements, but I do want to let um, our listeners know, thank you for still listening, yes. um, but also to let you know that if you have any comments or anything that you want DJ and I to break down, you can get in touch with us, but you also can send us a voice message by going to anchor.fm slash breaking it down show. And when you go there, if you do it on your phone, I think it's easier, um, but you, there's a, a feature there that you can leave us a message. Um, and if you have any questions or problems doing that, you can reach us on social media um, as well. And additionally, it really helps the show out if you subscribe to our YouTube channel yes, or subscribe. wherever you're listening to. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever you can leave a comment and a review, we'd really appreciate that. So yes. let us know what you think. Yes. And also, if you go to Facebook, you, you do a search for Breaking It Down with DJ and Courtney. You can find us on Facebook. Uh Instagram, uh, you can find us, uh, and also you can email us at breakingitdownshow at gmail.com, breakingitdownshow at gmail.com. All so right. We're so always happy to hear comments. That's right. And third time's the charm. We did episode three. <laughs> yeah, the third one in the hopper. That's right. Yes. I hope we get some people to come back and listen to episode four. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they're going to keep coming back. It's like KFC. You know, once you had a, you had a wing, you want to. <laughs> Is that their slogan? <laughs> no, it's not. And, I should, and actually, KFC, I, I shouldn't even say that. I because... was going to say, I think the keep coming back belongs to somebody else. I believe yeah. that. Like, that's Chris, another like, like Krispy Kreme. You know, we're like Krispy Kreme. Once you had one of our donuts, you want more. <laughs> you know. I think that's their slogan either. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, thank you for listening. All right, take care.